So are you considering making a move to Tampa, Florida, and you're wondering what is happening in the real estate market here? Well, in today's video, I'm going to break it down. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give you five categories. We're going to talk about supply and demand. We're going to talk about price and value. We're going to talk about the economy. We're going to talk about interest rates, and we're going to talk about migration because all of these things affect what is happening here in Tampa. As a matter of fact, just today, there was an article from bankrate.com ranking Tampa as one of the hottest real estate markets in the U.S. Let's find out why. All right, so I try to do these deep dives at least twice a year, and ideally we do them quarterly because the market is always changing, and that is happening right here, right now in the United States, and it's been one heck of a roller coaster these last few years. And we get so many phone calls from people just like you who are considering buying, relocating, or investing here in the Tampa Bay area about what is happening in the market. And hey, Juan, is it a good time? Is it not? Should I wait? What should I do with my money? Or, you know, this goal of retirement for us, we really like to make this happen. We're just uncertain. And I completely understand that. As we start this video today, there isn't a single soul on this planet who has a crystal ball. As a matter of fact, I think Ray Dalio says it best. He who lives by the crystal ball is destined to eat glass. And I got news for you. I ain't interested in eating glass in any way, shape, or form. So what this is not going to be is a prediction. What we're going to do is break down the actual numbers. What has been happening? What is the trend? We're going to dig into some of those details. And I really wanted to be concise about this. So these five categories, I think that they are very easy to digest and they can really give a clear understanding of what's happening here in the market. So let's get into this right away with supply and demand. All right, so anybody who's been looking at the real estate market recently, you're getting all kinds of conflicting views, right? Like real estate's down, real estate's up, and that is totally local. Depending on where you live, this matters a lot because if you look towards the western part of the United States, there are definitely areas like San Francisco and Austin, Texas, and Phoenix, Arizona that are, have been down, down considerably, double digits. But when you look over on the east coast, especially the, the southeast, you are seeing numbers just continue to climb in terms of real estate values. And the main reason, and when you take a step back and you think about what is happening, how does our economy run? You got to remember, we run on supply and demand. And at the end of the day, we do not have enough houses to supply the demand that is in the marketplace. Now, there's been a lot of contributing factors that have led to price declines in specific areas and during specific months. But here in the Tampa Bay area, since February, we have increased every single week in terms of value. And it's really because of the lack of supply. So the big thing we need to ask ourselves is why? Why do we have this lack of supply? Well, builders weren't building homes, especially after the Great Recession. You know, there was a huge drop off in terms of building activity because there wasn't a tremendous amount of demand. And as this has started to shift with the pandemic, mobility being available, people could work from wherever they wanted to work. This really opened up the doors. And we here in Tampa Bay have really been a beneficiary of that activity. So when you merge the fact that builders haven't been building and that we have historically low inventory levels currently because of the lack in effect that is what's really causing this this pain point right now and continuing to see prices rise even though interest rates are as high as they are you know we definitely have an affordability issue here in the united states and we are starting to see that here in tampa as well but when people on average have mortgage rates below 6% and the current interest rate is 6.85, that makes it very difficult, right? It, it makes some someone who's considering selling their home doesn't necessarily want to do that. And I want to read some stats to you right now. We've got 99% of the country has mortgages under 6%. 85% have mortgages that are under 5% interest rates. 28% are under 3%. And approximately 40% of the homes in the United States don't even have a mortgage at all. So when you take that into account, historically low inventory levels because people don't wanna sell, right? They don't wanna let go of their 3% interest rate. And you couple that with this migration, people moving to areas like Florida and Tampa specifically, it really puts a lot of pain and a lot of stress into the market. And that's what we're seeing here. So this is an interesting time to be in real estate. And it's definitely an interesting time to be a home buyer. Sellers, if your home is turnkey, it's been updated, you really have the cat's meow in terms of the quality of buyer bringing it to the table. But if you have neglected your home for some period of time, 
those are the homes that you're seeing price decreases on. Now, what is driving listings? Because if people don't have a mortgage and they have extremely low interest rates, why would you ever sell? Typically, why we're seeing homes get listed right now is because of life events. And I want to share some of those life events. You know, maybe it's a young couple who had one child and now they're having their second and they need a bigger space. Okay, so they're willing to let go of that lower interest rate because they need more space. The other one that usually affects the market is illness or unfortunately death, right? When when people pass on, that's typically when we'll see homes come to the market. Almost 70% of homeowners who inherit a property from a family member sell that property. So we typically see those come to the market. The other life event that you see is divorce. And this one you think would help the inventory, but what it does is actually ends up hurting inventory. And the reason being is because if you take two people who are who are in one home and they split and, and they go separate ways, now you have two housing needs, not one. And this is really putting a lot of pressure on this marketplace. So we talked about the supply issue, but now let's start talking about the demand. What is driving that demand? And, you know, you might think, you know, as, as I would, that 7% interest rates, you know, essentially are going to shut down the market. Now, it hasn't totally stifled demand. You know, it definitely has slowed things down a ton, down 30% in some instances um, in terms of the actual number of homes being sold. But we still have demand. Well, where's that demand coming from? It is coming from people like retirees, people who have worked their entire life to retire to come to a location. They're not typically going to allow interest rates to stand in the way of that dream. Some, if not a majority of them, are able to pay cash for those properties. Like we've discussed before, almost 40% of the homes here in the United States don't have a mortgage on them. Number two is that life event we were discussing earlier, right? This drives demand. And this demand is continuing just to, to, to chug along here. A lot of our clients come to us from the Pacific Northwest. They come to us from California. They come to us from places like Arizona, even Texas. And even though Texas is exploding right now too, and most certainly the Midwest and the Northeast. You know, New York, New Jersey, Massachusetts, Connecticut. We get a lot of phone calls from there. You know, there's, we definitely have a lot of demand coming. And oh, by the way, if we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala. I'm a licensed real estate agent and a team leader here with the True Living Group. And I help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest here in the Tampa Bay area. We make videos that are all things Tampa Bay, what it's like to live here, what it's like to work here, what it's like to play here, the food, the dining, the outdoors, the beaches, and the sunshine. So if you're into that sort of thing, make sure you go down below and click that little like button, hit the subscribe as well. And if you'd like to talk real estate, all of my contact information is listed down below. There's even a link to my calendar so you can schedule a time that's most convenient for you. Now let's get right back into this. So the second thing on this list that I wanted to address is price and value because these are not the same thing. There's oftentimes when, when we're looking at things and we say, okay, the, we see prices, prices are going down. So that means that, that um, you know, things are cheaper. Well, that's not necessarily true. You need to look into the numbers and find out what is happening there. What prices are going down? Prices are going down on houses? Yes, they are. But what type of property is going down? Here in the Tampa Bay area, we still have price decreases. At the peak of price decreases, which was roughly around last October, we were seeing roughly 1,800 price decreases made every seven days on our local inventory. That has decreased steadily down to roughly 1,000 price decreases. Now, I know what you're saying, Juan, 1,000 price decreases is a lot. It is, but when you realize that you have somewhere between 3,000 and 5,000 properties on the market at any one given time, but what prices are going down on what properties? And if you take the time to look through those photos, say you're on Redfin or Realtor or our website looking for homes, what you'll notice is that homes that have been neglected, maybe they need kitchens and bathrooms and flooring, maybe they haven't been touched in 20 to 30 years, maybe they need a roof. Those things are all very expensive to replace. And at 7% interest rates or 6.85, what we have in the number today, most people aren't interested in taking on those problems. Because when you start talking about roofs and air conditioners alone, if you do a roof and, and an AC in a property, you're looking somewhere between twenty-five and fifty thousand dollars at a minimum, depending on how big the property is, what type of you know roof and AC you, you purchase. And then when you look over at the inventory that everybody loves, right? Those homes that are completely updated, been completely remodeled. Take note of how quickly those homes are selling, because right now in our marketplace, those homes are typically lasting less than two weeks. 
they were going multiple offers and they were going over asking price. So these two things are not the same thing. You definitely want to be mindful of it. And right now here, the median sales price in the greater Tampa Bay area is $420,000. Now I want to stop right here because median and average are not the same thing. And depending on where you live, that number is definitely going to be higher. You know, to to get a quality three bedroom, two bath, you know, a home that's been either renovated or you know newer, you're going to be looking in the high fours to to mid fives on average. That's what we're seeing right now. Again, average versus median. So I think that this is something important to focus on. I want to talk about why you see price decreases, especially if they're in not desirable areas, high crime districts, and they've got poor school ratings. Those those properties always take hits all right always it doesn't matter what state you live in those properties are always harder to sell especially when sellers have aspirational pricing and what do i mean by that right now sellers are looking at their neighbors who are getting top dollar and selling literally in days if not weeks and going okay well i own a three bedroom two two bath house in the same neighborhood my home must be worth as much money and they haven't done windows and they haven't done flooring and they haven't done kitchens and baths and they haven't done the roof and maybe they don't have a pool and they put their home up for the same price and i'm telling you again no one wants to take on those quote unquote challenges with interest rates as high as they are today and that leads me to the feedback that i will often get from buyers when they've been you know hoping to make this happen and now they're sitting on the sidelines and when we have a discussion i say hey you know what exactly is it that you're waiting for? And then, you know, the feedback that I typically get is for interest rates to go down. But what most people don't recognize is when you're in a high demand area and interest rates go down, that actually drives prices up because those buyers who have been sidelined because they were either couldn't purchase because of the interest rates or had been waiting for interest rates to drop, now you are in a competitive mix with those buyers. So just be mindful of this, right? With no one having a crystal ball about where home pricing is going to go, because historically speaking, on average, real estate gains about 4% a year annually. Have we had dips? 100%. Will we have them again? Most likely that's going to happen but timing the market is very, very difficult. So keep this in mind when you're trying to achieve that goal of home ownership. It's like the old adage of when is the best time to plant an oak tree? Well, a hundred years ago, well, when's the next best time right now? And it's the same thing with owning real estate. You probably don't know anyone who's owned real estate for 10 years who is upset that they made that decision. You most certainly don't know anyone who bought real estate 20 years ago and held on to it that is upset that they made that decision because they are definitely sitting on a tremendous amount of equity in that home. And that's what's going on. Interest rates are definitely putting a lot of pressure on the marketplace, but people who can buy, right? And again, this is Florida, so we do have get to buy purchasers. It is definitely putting a lot of demand on our marketplace. And that moves us to number four on our list today, which is migration. And I discussed it a little bit earlier, but Florida is a get to state for the most part, not a have to state. Many, many people that move here move from a different state, a different country, or a different region of the United States. It seems like everyone is moving to Florida. And there's some truth to that. The last stat that I saw so far this year said that there were over 1,200 people moving to Florida every single day. And check out this migration map. Florida is the last state on here that's red, meaning that we are still the hottest area for migration in the country. It is phenomenal when you think about that. If you don't have enough supply and you continue to grow in demand, it only makes things more challenging when it comes time to buy a home. So looking at how to execute that is super important and understanding what is driving that demand. Obviously, people come here for lifestyle. They come here because of the weather. They come here because of the sunshine. They come here to retire. You know, Tampa is the unofficial tech hub of Florida. I love that. There are so many tech jobs here. We are attracting young professionals. On average, Tampa's super young. When we came down here, initially you know in my mind i thought just like every other ignorant northerner right like i believe that you got old you retired to florida and those were the only people going down there and then when i came to tampa to visit five years ago it totally changed our perspective we were surrounded by young professionals in a vibrant city tampa's alive saint pete's alive it's great to see 35.9 years of age on average that's crazy when you think about it and we live towards the Gulf Coast out in the Clearwater, St. Pete area. And the median age here is 45 years old approximately. So keep that in mind when you're, when you're considering Tampa. It's vibrant, it's alive, it's continuing to get younger. We have so many good real estate developments and projects going on. There's so much happening here. It's just something to take a look at. And that's with continuing to drive this migration. 
you know, politics aside, we have extremely low unemployment in the state of Florida and here in Tampa as well. So these are considerations and it's what's continuing to drive this migration pattern down south. And before we bust into the last category here, which is economy, I would love to know your thoughts on this video. You know, where are you watching from? What's going on in your local market? And hey, while you're down there, if you've gotten any value, do not hesitate to hit that like button. It really does help more people like you see videos just like this. And the final category today is economy. I'm not an economist, but here's what I can see, right? Both anecdotally and through data. The fact of the matter is Tampa is continuing to grow. Florida is continuing to grow to the tune of 1,200 people every single day coming from a different country or a different state choosing to call Florida their home. So that gives me a lot of confidence on where our marketplace is headed in general. It also helps me understand that this, this demand is not going away and we should expect this for quite some time. If interest rates continue to rise and become a problem, which it looks like the Federal Reserve may pause here, this thing can still continue to go up. They might go down a little bit, but for the most part, you know, the big brains are telling us that this is kind of the environment that we're going to be in, you know, somewhere in this, you know, 6% interest rate world. So that means if you've been sitting on the sidelines waiting to purchase a home, meanwhile, prices continue to increase. Like I said, here in Tampa, we're up 5%. So these numbers are moving pretty quick. And when you take into account, you know, these factors where Tampa keeps getting recognized, Florida keeps getting recognized for advocacy for businesses, it's, you know, advocacy for citizens. And this isn't to go political, but I just want you to understand what is attracting people. Doesn't make them right, doesn't make them wrong, doesn't make you right, doesn't make you wrong. That's the beautiful part about the United States. You get to choose, and I love that. So if you're considering making a move here or you have any questions about buying, selling, or relocating here in the Tampa Bay area and you want to reach out and just have a conversation, do not hesitate. All of my contact information is listed down below. I would love to have that conversation. Me and my team would be honored to serve you in your real estate needs. And until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.